venture is between Toyota and GM. And uh, of course, the GM was, has been a very number one you know, top seller, auto, automobile seller in the, in, in, in the world at those days in the 80s, before 80s. Now, the, I, I, don't, I don't know, when was it? 2009, um, GM went bankrupt, unfortunately. But before that, GM has been number one, the biggest auto manufacturer in the world. And uh, so what I will explain the how it started, then how that project started, what was the trigger, and then how uh, we discussed with, uh, with Toyota between Toyota and GM to establish a joint venture. Then how it started, actually started. I was heavily involved in the training program. And so it was a great, great experience for me. And of course, for the G uh, new me people, at the same time for all the people from Toyota, including me, it's amazing. It's a very, very interesting experience. So I would like to share with you today. And I think that it can be interesting for us how to transfer the uh -huh. Toyota production system way of thinking to the mm -hmm. Western world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I it, I'm mm -hmm. waiting for all your uh, tips and tricks <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and challenges you are facing with. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. The next page shows. Uh, Okay, forget about it. This is my my background, so forget about this. And um, okay, you know the first page shows that how it started, the beginning. Japan, U.S. trade friction because 1960s, 50s are slow, but 1960s, the Japanese uh, uh, product, the quality of Japanese product is very very good, so good, so up. Uh, and uh, and uh, so a Japanese uh, tech, type of textile, you know, see the textile or shirt, or you know, all those fabrics. Uh, Japanese uh, uh, product is very very high quality, while Americans uh, product quality is not so good. So it's Japanese uh, textiles was selling so good in the United States. So what it suffered there, Americans U.S. textile industry suffered. It's not our fault. It's their fault because they did not try to bring up their quality as much as they they need to. But you know they are not happy. Those, those textile people are not happy. So it was just a small textile industries area problem. However, it's it's they damaged. They had received so much damage from the Japanese import. So it started as a local, no, small industries problem, it's become a political problem. And so what they came up, you know, bring it up to the to the Congress. And so it became in the political problem. And, uh, and so uh, uh, at the time, you know, official was, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, can you show me the next page, please? Yeah, you know, at the beginning, uh, okay, uh, as you look at this uh, 1969, uh, as you see in the picture on the left hand side, is Mr. Sato, Prime Minister at the time, that, that Richard Nixon was the president of the US. So they meet again from time to time, and one, one day they meet, and Mr. Nixon, uh, Richard Nixon, was requested by the American textile industry that they asked uh, Richard Nixon that, okay, we are suffering from the Japanese textile industry, the textile product coming, rushing into our market. And it's so it's a big damage to us. It's, we, our product doesn't sell well. So can you take some actions to the Japanese people? That Richard Nixon is, is, is very, for him, very important. All the textile industry in the south, southern area is very, very important. So he promised, I will take care of it. Then he met with Mr. Sato, Japanese Prime Minister. I don't know where, maybe Hawaii or somewhere. Then uh, Mr. Mr. Richard Nixon asked them, "Can you please slow down? You can you tell your uh, you know fabric or textile industry people to slow down export to the United States, please?" Then Mr. Sato replied, "Okay, I will make my best effort." That is exactly what he said he, in Japanese. Then he, uh, the, the, the politicians, just uh, the government 
you know, interpreted in, interpreted into English. I will make my best effort. That's what he said. Then, my Richard Nixon is American, so he took it. Do my best effort. He said, "Okay." Sato said, "Do I do my best effort?" That means, yes, I will try my best and may I will ask them to slow down. But on the other hand, you know, Mr. Sato is a typical Japanese. So Sato meant that I'm sure that um, Richard Nixon knows that I will do my best because that means in Japanese and uh, Japanese meaning no. I will try my best, but it's not it's not easy. So don't expect me to make it. So it's no. So Nixon may understand it. It's yes. Why Sato said I said no. So both apart. Then when Richard Nixon came back, then still the, the Japanese products keep coming into U.S. market, you know, very radically. So it create a lot of effort, lot of problem. So it become a huge political problem on those days. Then uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, later Prime, uh, he became Prime Minister, Tanaka uh, became Prime Minister at the time, he's high up there. He was, he took care of it and he accepted, he decided to accept it. He wanted to avoid the, the, the struggle between US and Japan. So he said, okay, okay, there is no choice. So we have to slow down. That we have to pay a huge amount of money to Japanese uh, textile industry to slow down. That is how this started. Next page, please. So that was the trigger. Then, as I mentioned, you know, Japanese product, the quality is becoming so good. Textile industry, overall, all those the steels and automobiles. So in the 60s and particularly 80, no, 70s. And the Japanese product is, is small size cars it has been imported to the United States and American customers like it so much because it's good quality. And, and, and the gas consumption is very small compared with American big cars. So uh, then they start buying, then GM and Ford and Chrysler, all those big three manufacturers have suffered so much because their cars don't sell, do not sell well because gas mileage is bad. So they have started, you know, complaining to the Japanese manufacturers, including Toyota. That's why they said UAW, United Auto Union, uh, uh, Auto Workers, Workers Union. They said, if you sell cars in, in America, then you have to build those cars in America. Don't build cars in Japan and sell it to us. Because you have to no, because you have to build a car in the United States because it creates jobs. See? So that is what they say. But it's anyways, that is raging in 70s. Then that voice is becoming so big. So Japanese government has no choice and to to discuss with the Japanese manufacturers. And in 80s, late 70s, um Japanese manufacturers started to consider of manufacturing cars in the United States. And so as you see down there, you know, Honda, I don't see, I, I, okay, the Honda was the first, and then Nissan the next year, and Toyota decided to step into the U.S. market and manufacturing cars in the United States a third. And that is how we, we started, we changed our policy to manufacture car, not in Japan, but in the United States. Next page, please. See, as you see, it's 80s. As you see on the 1981, 82, 83. So 80, 82 Honda built in, in Ohio. Then next year, which is 83, Nissan started building in Tennessee. That is where John Schick comes from. Then Toyota has been watching very carefully of the, the how Honda and Nissan has been doing, and, uh, and then but sooner or later maybe Toyota top management decided oh sooner or later we have to decide. So we've been watching very carefully, and then we start discussing with American manufacturers like Ford, but uh, the discussion with Ford did not did not make it because they manufacture small size cars as well. So. Then it's, it did not uh, succeed. Then GM came up. GM has, has been struggling 
And then, so GM and Toyota finally decided to, to work together and as a joint venture. And I, as, as I mentioned, Honda and the Nissan came, came to the United States earlier, but Honda came in by, by itself. Nissan came to the U.S. by, by themselves. But Toyota decided to work together with American manufacturer GM, which is very, very difficult for us. We think very difficult because corporate culture is so different. How come we we can work together and more efficiently together with the with a company of GM, which culture is so different? Anyways, that is how New Me was started. Next page, please. And see, uh, as you see the picture, it's uh, Roger Smith is, is the chairman of GM. Then Eiji Toyota is is uh, the chairman of uh, of Toyota, and uh, so they start working eighty one, and eighty two top management decided, okay, we're gonna you guys listen. We this I decided to work together with GM, and uh, so it's it's joint it's a joint venture. It's not. Just like Honda or on the Nissan, it's not we go into the market by ourselves. No, we work together with American manufacturer, 50-50 joint venture. And so GM will offer the facility, which is a Fremont plant. That was a, that was the largest plant within GM's uh, close to 50 plants in the United States in, on the West Coast. So production is twenty to uh, two hundred thousand over four hundred thousand. It's it's uh, it depends. But you know, starting as, uh, production start is nineteen eighty four. So two years later, uh, we will ma manufacture a small size car, which is Corolla size car, and joint venture period about twelve years, so more than ten years. This is an kind of agreement. It was a huge moment for Toyota particularly for Toyota, it's, it's the first time for Toyota to manufacture in this big scale. Next page, please. Uh, may I have a question? What was sure, the reason sure. uh, that, that Toyota decided to oh, go to, into joint venture, not well, to uh, follow very, that, the idea of Nissan and Honda? That, that, that's a very, very good question. Of course, we, we manufacture cars in, in Japan and sell it to US. That is easier. Well, not easier, but it's more you know, efficient. We don't have to worry about 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 the, the the poor quality of workers, whatever. However, you know, American market is so big, so we want to step into this market, but we have no idea. So working together with GM, we can learn how to manufacture cars with American workers, how they sell cars. We can learn so many skills and experiences from this joint venture. There are so many things that we can learn from the workers point of view, from the management point of view. So there are so many things that we can learn. That is a Toyota style. But on the GM side, they, they have not, never had a, a manufacturing experience of the small size car uh, with, with, with uh, is a small size engine and size is smaller and because they are not so interested. So they can learn how to man manufacture cars with a lower cost than their cost. So uh, both sides, it's benefit both sides, but for particularly for Toyota, you know, this is a great experience for us to step into the world market, how to work together with American workers. So. Uh, you know that is the reason, and and the same reason of Nissan and Honda, but you know Toyota, you know took joint venture, which is more difficult because you know totally different culture, and uh, and uh, however, AG Toyota found out that if we this is the most difficult challenge, more difficult than Honda, more difficult than Nissan has because they are they step into the world into the U.S. market sing, single, but. We are joint. We establish joint venture. This is more complicated, but the more complicated the situation is, then we learn so many things out of this very difficult situation. So, then we start with a very difficult. You know, we can solve this problem. Then nothing is more difficult than this one. This is very very hard. Or is very high. If we clear this, then we can learn so many things. So, uh, top management has very have a long long views 
long, you know, many years ahead. So they think about not this year, not next year, but 10 years or 20 years later, we will be a very, very great international manufacturer. So he views so far. So that is one of the things that Toyota, you know, it has been so successful, always, you know, look for looking at the not only the next year, the five years, but 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ahead. Then this is, see, as you, as you see, the new me is that they named it, American people name it, New United Motor Manufacturing Inc. So it's shortened N-U-M-M-I, so we call it new me. And uh, as, as, uh, just, you know, the, the, you are not asking mm -hmm. the, what is the goal, goal, what is the benefit? GM now can learn how to manufacture a small size car with lower cost, know-how. Toyota's goal is acquire how to manage people or ma the manufacturing and the management know how we can learn from them. And uh, so this is, uh, and the employees down there, employees, can you believe it? 85% on the bottom, 85% are ex-GM UAW workers. But at the time, we have been told that UAW are terrible, terrible workers. That is what we, we've been we've been told. Well, when I, we say terrible, that means workers are lazy, workers don't work hard, and and uh, and they are kind of you know terrible people, and they have no you know uh, no uh, de dedication or they just they don't care about car quality or whatever. So so they come to 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 work, but they just la become lazy. So you know. All those, you know, information came to us. So uh, I was so worried about how can how can we make this a successful project? Anyways, but since top management decided from a very long time, long, you know, uh, views. And so this is a kind of target. This is a framework. And I, as you see, this is in front of the new me plant. Oh, see, and uh, see, th then we have to. Share these are the Fremont GM's Fremont plants. These are the issues. See, quality and productivity lowest. Their quality and productivity, they it was the lowest among all the GMs around 50 plants. Can you believe it? It's the lowest, terrible. And the workforce problem, very poor management labor relations. Managers don't care about workers. They they stay in the nice, nice, you know nice room uh, with, a, with a nice carpet, but they don't come down to the shop floor. They don't care. And so uh, the, the communication with management and labor is very, very small. And, uh, and the interaction between management workers is very, very low. And because of that, on the bottom, low morale, absent, absenteeism 20%. Always two people out of 10 absent without leave. So it's this is terrible, and uh, see sabotage, freaking sabotage. They drink alcohol, and they just sometimes they you know play games while working and and the terrible things, and the workers felt you know depressed because of the, they took no pride in, in their work because they are not treated well by the managers, the managers don't care about this. So terrible relation between management relations. That was how it was before we established a joint venture. Then we established, you know, we we actually Toyota is requested to take care of the management. So we at New Me, we send our top management and, and management people and uh, to New Me while they provide 85% of ex GM people. And uh, so the, the, we have to make a policy of this new joint venture. As you see on the, on the top, mutual trust, respect for others. This we could not see, or nobody has seen this one at Fremont plant in GM days. But this is what, this is quite normal at, at Toyota. So this is very important. Also equality, job security, because the people, we don't fire anybody unless it is very serious. So equality means 
show res respect e equal. We treat people equal at Toyota. So the same concept will be applied to this uh, joint venture. And all those things. So also, as you see on the bottom, team leaders, team leaders is the lowest level a uh, leader. And above team leader, we have group leaders. So group leaders and team leaders are very, very key people, very important to people to run all the shop floor. And so team leaders uh, manage about five to seven members, staff members, it's the smallest group. Then they are at certain time, they are promoted to, to, to higher level, which is group leaders. And so uh, key people are group leaders and team leaders. All those leaders on shop floor, they are very, they have to know everything, but also they have to take care of the people. I will say it later, but that is a very, very important key role. And the uh, bottom employee participation. When you, you know suggestions, you are familiar with suggestion system. Toyota Learn suggestion system, which is carried out in the Ford Motor Company in 1950s. Age Toyota visited Ford Motor Rouge plant in, in up there and Detroit area, and he saw this suggestion system. So he came back that idea, and the Toyota, uh, within Toyota, we, we, we implemented this suggestion system. And so suggestion system is, uh, is, uh, is all, every worker who has some, some idea, then he or she can put it down in, in the format and bring it to, 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 uh, to their bosses to improve the quality, improve the speed or imp whatever. And, and, and the quality and co lower the cost. So that is, is, is what we decided to apply this uh, you new know, joint venture. So employees are heavily involved in that Kaizen activities, which we did, they did not share. They did not experience where GM days. GM management did not expect them to do Kaizen. No, they don't care. They, they told the people, okay, you guys follow the, this uh, this script now not script follow the rules and and all the manuals you do this exactly what is written in manuals and you don't have to do anything else so it's hundred you know totally different hundred eighty degrees and uh, and uh, I mean totally different concept which is but within Toyota this is this is not you know different this is we take it for granted anyway so these key concept will be carried out with this new joint venture. Next page, please. And uh, uh, this is not so well known. So uh, this is the first time I talk about this uh, new project. You know, before we receive, we of course we received, uh, I don't know, remember how many, maybe 500 or 600 total, the shop floor uh, leaders to Japan for three week training. But before we received all the work leader, working level or leaders, we received managers, which originally come from GMs. And this is the first time, uh, I don't know why I did not share this with, before, but we received, so we start receiving um, shop floor workers, uh, leaders in June, 1984. But two, three months earlier, which is around March and April, we received received all those managers, or most of the managers that knew me come from GM, came from GM. Some some uh, somebody come from Ford, some are Chrysler, some other companies, but majority of the managers come from the GM, not necessarily Freeman plant, but from all over. The, the GMs are planned. Anyway, managers, uh, are they, because managers are key people also. And so uh, they came in in March and, and April. So I was in charge of the training program and their training is a little bit shorter, around 10 days, you know, two or three days orientation by us, by me and, and John Shuk and our staff members. We, uh, we, we talk about the Toyota culture. And, uh, and they, they just, uh, then after that, they just, we may I, may them... I ask, may I yep. ask, what was their yeah. reaction? What was their reaction for, for, for the, during this two, uh, three days training? What was their reaction of managers for this training? Yeah. When they, reaction? when they oh, okay. heard okay. about the Toyota culture? Uh, that, that's interesting because it's, you know, 
workers, we know, we heard about workers. They keep saying, oh, our workers, I'm sorry, yoshino san our workers are terrible. But this is the first time I run into uh, GM managers. To, to, to make a long story short, I thought those guys don't understand how to treat people because they don't care about, no, no, they, not they don't know, but they don't care. Because when I talk, we talk about most important thing for us Toyota people, Toyota manager is to take care of the people. They said, what do you mean take care of the people? They are an adult, not small kids. What do you mean take care, take care of, the, uh, of them? We, oh, we have to advise them. We have to help them to develop, help them to grow. And so they don't understand it. So uh, those managers, it's typical GM style, GM the mentality. I was so surprised when I, I ran into them, as you see on the bottom, plant manager. Plant manager is, is very nice, but assembly manager, welding manager, power paint manager, all those managers uh, basically come from GM. Some of them are very nice, but some of them terrible managers. Maybe they are smart, but they don't care about workers. And, and the first days and we found out, and John Schick was so shocked. I was shocked, very much shocked, because they don't, they don't want to talk about their workers and because they don't know much about their workers. So they don't come down to the shop floor. Of course, the paint manager was come down sometimes, but not as often as Toyota people. So at first, in the first American, uh, uh, people are uh, managed those managers. I was so shocked because you know they don't even want. They are not to me. They are not so much serious about learning something Toyota style. So I was so shocked. Why these these guys only two days in, in orientation, but they are not serious. They don't ask so, so many questions. They just want to just you know wait for. The time goes by and they want to go go back to the hotel and have some have some drinks and something. So they I don't think I did not think they are so serious. This is the first time I share this just between us. So I was so shocked. What kind of people are they? They are very much, you know, they get paid so much. They brag about, oh Yoshino san, when we become the manager, management, manager's level, we are given a house. Can you believe it? we are given a house to live by the company? And we are given so so much benefit, which no other workers can enjoy. It. So we are we are treated so nice by uh, by the company. And uh, how about Toyota? But company does not give you any money for the housing. See? So uh, they are to me, it's what kind of people are they? I, I, I was not so sure. Okay, these guys will lead these workers who are, who are coming in June. I was so worried about it. And uh, but some people are nice, particularly in the you know shop floor, uh, a paint manager, somebody building manager. They are nice people, paint managers. But production control manager, he was terrible. Purchasing, he was also terrible. Distribution manager, not so good. HR manager, he does not care. Can you believe it? It was, I was so shocked. And uh, so uh, this was before, again, before we received workers. So we were worried. So I, I, I keep asking John Shuk, John, you know, the, I, I don't have a good you know, feeling on these people. They just, you know, they don't, they don't care about our pre presentation. They don't ask any questions. And they want to go back home to the hotel room as, as soon as possible. So they are not so interested in, in our, you know, lectures. How come they are hired at this new me? So I was so worried about. So John felt the same thing. Yes, son, I agree with you. So that was big shock for me. Anyways, and so th that is the, the first. Uh, it encounter to the manager level. Then after that, you know, we start receiving uh, uh, workshop floor workers, leaders, team leaders, group leaders. Those people are very 
we found out they are country people. Of course, they are, they live in, in San Francisco and uh, and uh, close to San Francisco. It's, it's close to big city. But basically, they are country people and very nice people. The first group came in June 6th, June 4th, excuse me, June 4th, 1984. And, and we, we have the welcome party and we just, you know, uh, we came to know each other. Very, very nice people. Anyways, um, we provided all those shop floor leaders and uh, on the job training. So uh, they stayed in Japan for three weeks. And the first week, you know, we provide the overall information about Toyota. So we pick up, we pick up about eight different topics and Toyota's history and whatever, and including Toyota production system and all those things. We um, uh, one entire week, five days in, in the classroom. And we provided all the all the lectures, and then then they are so curious. It's they found out so different, different, different culture, so different way of thinking. So th this is the first time for them to run into that totally different culture. So they are so kind of shocked in a nice, in a good manner, so shocked. But you know, when we talk about line stop, you know, you are familiar with the line stop when you tr you find some issues, problem when a assembly line is moving, and while you you find some some defects and you cannot fi you cannot finish it, you cannot correct it while the car is staying in your stage, then you have to pull the rope, you have to stop the line. See, that is one of the typical Toyota style, and they did not. You know, uh, understand it. You see, you know, the line stop is great on Toyota. However, we cannot do that because we get fired. But so uh, we keep telling them, I know, I know that was GM days. You get fired, but you are praised within Toyota if you stop the line, if you find some defect and you cannot fix it, then you stop the line, you pull the uh, rope and stop the line. You are appraised, you're respected because you are welcome to do that. So totally different. So he says, no, 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 we cannot. So it was very interesting. So they are so serious. Workers, you know, leaders are so serious about learning something. What a huge difference between all those managers. So I was so relieved to find out, you know, those workers are treated so bad. And so it's, it's, you know, the relation is so bad between GM leaders and workers. The relation is so bad, not because they are stupid people. They are nice people. You know, the, it started from the management level. Management level did not care about those people. So that was a trigger. So they workers felt that, OK, the top management don't care about the, our managers don't care about us. Then, you know, you know, we don't feel, you know, like we want to contribute to this company, but we just, you know, do what we want to do. Anyways, so anyway, that's a huge difference. Workers level, managers level, what a huge difference. And see, this is, um, okay, this is, uh, again, after those managers, then we received around 30 people, shop floor leaders. This is the first day. And every time we received the first group, no, the, the group, we take them out. We took them out in in our uh, visitors, in our um, kind of what do, what do we call it? It's a Toyota, you know, uh, Kaikan, which is uh, we we exhibit all those cars and everything. So we have a tour, and so this is a picture every day, every time. So this is June fourth, right? And uh, the second second line on the right hand side. Second one is a tall one is John Shuk. And next uh, on the left, it's me. And so every time we receive uh, the people, just we take a picture and share it with them. And uh, so uh, actually this was uh, uh, June 4th. And first, uh, again, first week they stayed with us. Uh, some ties. See, they have some ties and uh, in an office. And uh, then two weeks, we put them in a Takaoka plant. And uh, so, uh, you know, of, as I mentioned, in, in our first week of our presentation, they understand it. However, the, some of the some of our actions are totally new to them. 
which is they are not allowed to do that of GM days. So uh, they just, in the middle of the talks, and uh, they just raise their hand, uh, no, sir, we cannot do this. We cannot stop the line, GM days. No, you are with new me, which is not GM. It's a joint venture, totally new company. So uh, I know I understand that you are not allowed to stop the line, GM days, but take a look next week, you're going to be in Takaoka plant. Then you will see it. You will try it yourself. So don't worry about it. I know you, you don't understand it, but that's fine. But you will find out and you just learn how great th that system is. And so it's very, very interesting. You know, it's a huge shock to them. The first week of presentation orientation is huge shock to them. And one of the things that, of course, the system, take care of the people is is is, is it's important also those Kaizen mindset is also very, very important. The most important thing is that they feel that within Toyota, people are treated very equally, treated very nice, and show respect the type of very important concept, which they could not find, they could not enjoy in GM days. So uh, they felt it at, at, at the first week, and after that two weeks, they are put in, in the shop floor, then they they recognized it, and uh, and so it was a great great experience for them. And it also at the same time it is great experience for us Toyota people because that was the first time for me, first time in my entire life to run into a working level of people from the United States. I've never met anybody like them before. So uh, anyways, so uh, the, the result of this this. Uh, training program and after that a certain timing then um, before one year as you see absenteeism used to be 20 percent now one year later only two percent which is the best one and also assembly cost fell to the same level of toyota and uh, and also productivity is it, 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 two times as high as the gm average gm average is so low and also quality became at the best across the implant. Employees felt responsible for their work and proud of what they did. See, this is, we did not force them, but they, they enjoyed two, uh, actually three weeks in Japan, and they felt it, they knee deep in the Toyota culture, and we did not force them to learn. We just let them you know, enjoy the working on together and spending some time together with Toyota people, then this is the result of their reaction when they came back to Fremont, California. So uh, that is the outline of the NUMI project. And now I, I would like you to see this uh, uh, videotape, which is NHK is a Japanese national TV. Uh, Nippon Hoso, uh, what is this K? I don't know. Uh, this is uh, uh, Hoso Kyokai. So it, it's a national TV. And 1985, so it's one year later, this uh, is a NHK uh, TV program, you know, editor was so much interested in how the training was done and how the outcome, so they just made the special uh, pr program and they came over to Toyota City and uh, they filmed this. And uh, so it original original video is uh, 75 minutes, but it's too long. So, uh, and and Joanna and he, her son just uh, was so nice to shorten it to 31 minutes. This is amazing. So I I would like to share it with you. And uh, and actually, it's narration. This actually this program was was meant to, was uh, produced for the Japanese viewers. So the narration is Japanese. However, I put I translated it into English and put the subtitle on the bottom. So please look at the bottom what they are talking about. All in Japanese language, but you can you can see. So please carefully. Watch carefully what the subtitle is. And uh, my advice is watch carefully what and how Japanese people are speaking and what's the difference between them and American uh, people. The way how they are describing their experiences. Yes. Uh, yep. 
Let's check it. Uh, can you confirm that uh, you can hear the, the sound? Just a minute.今月、アメリカで一台の車が公開された。何の変哲もない小型車である。製作したのは世界一アメリカのゼネラルモーターズと世界二日本のトヨタ自動車であった。Mr. <笑>会長はノバという新しい車をですね、日本の車と考えですが、それともアメリカの車というふうにお考えですか。さあ、難しい質問ですな。いや、とにかく<笑> GM と豊田の共同生産は日本主導で行われた。生産技術は日本が全て提供し、アメリカは50%の資本と車の販売を担当する。この共同生産には一つだけ条件がついていた。それは、GMが、レイオフ、一時解雇している組合のメンバーを
難しいです、うん、いやね言ったことを確実にやってくればいいんだけどやっぱり自分の考えでこう行動するっていうんですかやる方が多いもんだからで自分でね僕らが物を渡したらそれをちゃんと加工してね自分で把握してくれいいんだけどそれをどこに置いたかわからんというような状況だもんだからだからその辺でもうちょっと真剣味がないなあって。合弁会社が初めに採用したのは生産の中心となる班長クラス250人彼らは30人ずつに分かれ現場研修のため次々と日本に向かった、uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Japanese methods Japanese system of production、I'm、really excited about it yeah I was laid off about three years ago and I, I had nine years for General Motors at that time And、uh, I went to work for Lockheed Spissel, Missiles in Space, and then、uh, General Motors offered me a job in Missouri. Are, are they your family? Yes. You want to meet them? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> this, this is my wife, Joyce,、yeah. and my two daughters,、Hi. Jennifer and Jen Holbrook.、Yeah. Much money, huh? Lots and lots of money. This way, money? Yeah. <laughs> 彼らは日本の生産方式を日本の工場で直接学び取るそれをこのあと採用される一般労働者に自分たちで教え込まなければならないのであるゲン研修は去年の6月から9ヶ月にわたって行われたトヨタ王国と呼ばれる愛知県豊田市当の工場と1000に及ぶ関連部品メーカーが巨大なピラミッドを形成しているトヨタはこれまでモンロー主義と批判されながら自動車生産をほとんどこの町とその周辺に限ってきただが貿易摩擦が強まる中でこの地に安住しているわけにはいかなくなったのであるは。あアメリカ人一人に日本人トレーナー一人がつきマンツーマンで行われ44歳マイヤーズさんのトレーナーは9歳年下35歳の市橋さん世界一の生産性を誇る日本の中でもトヨタは絞ったタオルをまた絞ると言われるほどに徹底した合理主義で知られているそのトヨタ独特のやり方の一つが改善である改善とは作業の無駄を減らしより効率的にする方法を労働者自身が考え出すシステムである改善という概念を理解させるためわざと効率の悪い作業を見せるこの労働者は1回に1つの部品しか取らないしたがって部品の取り付けごとに箱と車を往復する。どうすればこの工程の時間が短縮できるかこれが研修生に出された問題であるゲンバ労働者同士が仕事のやり方について議論し合うのはアメリカ人たちにとっては初めての体験であった<音声>アメリカでは仕事のやり方を決めるのは管理職で労働者は決められた通りに仕事をするだけであった。30分の激論の末生まれた改善案
ネジやコーンが全部入るよう袋を3つ取り付けたまずあの改善前の,あのステップを紹介いたしますまずあの一番のところで部品を取ってそれで車に行って車にずっと部品を取り付けてそれでもう一回帰ってきて部品を取ってそれでもう一回行ってそれでずっと取り付けて帰ってきますこれが改善前ですで改善後はいっぺんにあの部品を全部取ってそれで車に行って取り付けてそれで帰ってくるということでこの歩き往復の歩きが4歩時間にして2秒短縮されました改善がすごく、あのー、分かりやすいですね彼らに分かりやすい改善ができたということであの彼らも非常にね喜んでやってくれてます Back in General Motors, no team leaders, and we, we do not discuss、uh, problems very often. The, big, the problems are discussed with management.、Uh, the fellow workers, team members,、uh, don't really discuss problems. So we're really excited about trying to, trying to、uh, do it their way. アメリカにない日本独特の生産方式の一つがラインストップである。ラインストップとは組み立て工程の中で不良箇所を発見するとその場で労働者が紐を引っ張ってラインを止めることである。労働者が紐を引っ張ると警報が鳴り班長が応援に駆けつけてくる。トヨタの工場の場合組み立てラインはおよそ1キロメートルその上を200台前後の車が1分間に5メートルの速さで常に流れている流れてくる車に不良箇所を発見した労働者は手直しのためラインをストップさせるラインストップするとそのライン上の他の車の組み立てもストップする。警報を聞くと班長が駆けつけ、直ちに不良箇所の修理に当たる。ラインストップは、現場の労働者が自分の判断で品質管理をするよう設けられた日本独特の方式なのである。トヨタの場合、1回のラインストップの時間は30秒以内である。アメリカでは、不良箇所を発見してもそのまま流し、最終段階で修理するという方法を取ってきたしかしこれはかえって手間がかかりコスト面でも品質管理の面でも効率が悪いことが証明されていた現場研修でアメリカ人は初めてラインストップを自分の目で見た作業中にラインが止まることはアメリカの工場ではありえないことなのである GM と組合との労働協約にはこう歌ってあるラインを止めることはストライキと同じ妨害行為であるラインストップがあったとき、経営側はその労働者を解雇することができる。He didn't have a team leader or a group leader to come over and assist. Okay? He had to try and get out of the hole the best way he could. But here you use the team leader and also the group leader if it's a bad problem or if he's in a hole and everybody just helps. We didn't have that. Uh, uh, if everybody was tied up, he'd just have to scuffle that out. Until he got out of the hole by himself or either missed something, even. American 工場はラインの流れるスピードが速い代わりに
作業の工程が細かく分かれしたがって作業員の数が多い合弁会社ではスピードはアメリカより 20% 緩くした代わりに1人の作業員がこれまでの2人分の作業をする。果たしてその方式がアメリカで適用できるのか3週間の研修が終わったみなさんのおかげで海をセコサスルジシンガー。中佐けましたタヨタのヒトタシは素晴らしいヒトタシでしたアルガトサグマン先生の帰国後しばらくして日本人トレーナーも渡米するアメリカでもこのペアは生産が軌道に乗るまで続くのであるいよいよ舞台はアメリカに移るサンフランシスコから車で1時間フリーモントは人口14万の町である3年前 GM の工場が閉鎖され町の活気が失われていたそれだけに新しい会社に寄せる町の期待は大きかった日本のトレーナーも次々と到着市内のアパートで自炊生活を始めていたゴーベン会社ヌーミーがスタートしてから10か月。合弁会社で働く日本人とアメリカ人は合わせて800人余りに上っていた日本から来たトレーナー180人アメリカ人の班長250人その下で働く一般労働者250人さらに一般労働者の採用が続いていた各部門ごとに行われる朝礼課長が先頭に立ってグループの団結を図るこれも日本の習慣を導入したものであるこれまでは各部門ごとに作業の実習を重ねてきただが今度は実際にラインの上で車を組み立てるのであるを終えたボディがラインに降りてくる。このガランドのボディに数々の部品が取り付けられ完成車となる最も人手がかかり熟練を要する。初めて組み立てをする車1号車である
本格生産に入ればラインの速度は日本と同じ1分間に5メートルしかし1号車は1分間に1メートルしか進まない一つ一つの作業が的確にできているかどうか厳しく確認しながら進めていくためである。作業の手順はきちんと守られているかどのくらいの時間がかかるか日本人トレーナーがチェックしていく作業には日本人は手出ししないことになっていた生産部門では部課長以上は日本人とアメリカ人がペアになり仕事をしている。池口工場長のパートナーはコンビス製造部長である2人は毎朝前日現場で起きたあらゆる問題点について検討するこの2人のもとに日本人トレーナーからすでに多くの問題点が上がってきている。この会社には食堂が一つしかない社長も並んで順番を待つ。GM 工場の頃には幹部職員用ホワイトカラー用ブルーカラー用と3つの食堂があった現場では職場ごとに改善ミーティングが始まっていた。週に2、3回休み時間を利用し、日本の研修で学んだ改善のやり方に習って、今の自分たちの作業に無駄がないか、みんなで話し合うのである。How do you think about this Kaizen concept? Oh, I think it's great because you really have an opportunity to get involved. Whereas before, when I worked at GM,、uh, you could make all kinds of suggestions as to make the job easier and You just, it didn't make an impression on anyone, and、uh, you just had to do it the one way, and that was it. 総勢180人に及ぶ日本人トレーナーたちは、フリーモント周辺の9つのアパートに分かれ、1部屋2人ずつで暮らしている。彼らのアメリカ勤務は3ヶ月交代で日本で言えば自責みたいな形があるんだけどみんな多責にするんですねあいつが悪いからできないんだっていう形があるもんでそこら辺をもう少し日本的に考えてもらえばあのまず自分が悪いんではないかとちょっと自分を振り返ってもらうような形でねそれがちょっと足りないなっていう感じがするその人が分かってもねその,その人が全体にこう全部に教えてくればいいんですけどもね例えばグループリーダーを教えてもグループリーダーが一人で黙ってる場合もあるんですよねだからそういうところがちょっと日本の社会とね日本はもうあの例えば組長がおったら組長はもう若いもん部下を使っていくんですけども自分がやらないでね自分でこうしまっちゃうんですよね自分の財産だとしてそれは分かるんですけどねそこのところはちょっと違うんですねやっぱり日本とは。初めての組み立て作業は最終段階に入っていた一つ一つの作業を細かく確認しながら進めてきたため組み立て開始から4日経っていた
日本の生産方式でアメリカ人労働者が作り上げた1号車である。この車は日米共同政策の第1号車として車内に永久保存されることになった豊田社長と組合のスミス代表の手を取って従業員代表が壇上に上った That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Mr. Toyota, staff, and fellow UAW members, first off, it's been a long, dry spell since uh, this plant has uh, heard this kind of jubilation, and it's certainly good to see everybody here in that respect. Today is a historic one, the first car. But we're also on the threshold of a new adventure and relationship between labor and management. For too long, the American worker has been maligned, criticized, called bad names for building lousy products, poor quality American worker. At New United Motor, we will build a quality car and we will only build a quality car. And Mr. Toyota, if you would please deliver this challenge to our friends in Japan, We intend to build the best quality car in the world. Thank you. Company participate to make a good quality car. Now, our job is to produce the most qualified product continuously. That's the most big and challenging job. And、uh, I will say, this is very my personal subject. Today is my birthday. <laughs> Celebrate with the first car. Come back! a m e r i c a s a n i h o n s h a no, Honkak Se San, a t o n g e t a r a h a j i m a t a g e n z a 1日の生産台数は150台フル創業に入る来年3月には従業員2500人1日の生産800台年産20万台になるこれはトヨタが去年アメリカに輸出した車の 36% にあたる日米貿易摩擦が激しくなる中マツダ・三菱もアメリカでの合弁に乗り出すことを発表した1980年代の終わりには日本の5つのメーカーがアメリカで乗用車を生産するようになる。それぞれのメーカーはそれぞれの方法で文化や習慣の違いを乗り越えなければならない。それはもはや避けては通れない道である。
Okay, so I I'm really curious what do you think about the movie and uh, what tips did you found for yourself? Uh, so let's start discussion. Let's start asking questions to Mr. Isao Yoshino. Um, there is a um, there is uh, one question from chat. Is uh, what what were the major difference between Japanese and U.S. labor force? Are these differences still in 2012, 22? Say that again. What? Uh, what were the major difference between Japanese? Oh, major and, difference. Yeah, Japanese oh, okay. and U.S. labor force. I see. There are so many things have so many differences one outstanding is that the how to treat people actually in in the gm days you know as, as i mentioned earlier the managers don't pay much attention not so much attention to take care of the people working for them but after that well actually within when they came over to to japan to toyota they witnessed that the managers always try to you know, try to come down to the shop floor and to talk to the people and to think about their own people because those people are making making the quality, not the managers. So, uh, they, you know, people-oriented management is was the major, major difference, particularly between Toyota and GM. And uh, do you see uh, still this difference uh, after so many years of uh, of Toyota being on the U.S. market? What are your current observations? Well, I I don't I have not visited to those plants after that, so I don't know so much about it. But I spent ten years in Los Angeles and uh, not in the plant, but in the sales office. But uh, I feel the same way during that 10 years, you know, the, the, my partner, the way they talk to his uh, subordinate and, uh, and I, I'm the same level of my partner, but I, I saw very little opportunities that he, that my partner, uh, try to take care of the people. So uh, it's not easy to change it. And but new, in the new me case, we send our Japanese guy and partners with Americans. You know, we send a manager, manager level, and partners with Americans. So they work together closely together. So what each American manager learns something from Japanese counterpart. Also, Japanese managers also learn something from American partners. So they, during those partnership, they learn each other. But uh, in my own own experience, you know. It depends on the company. It depends on the structure of the organization. So, um, but now it's it's more Toyota style is is more accepted in other part of the country. So, uh, uh, maybe it's it's now so much difference, but still, I feel it's more individualism and not so much group mentality was appreciated. So that's my that's my finding. Still, it's 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 different. And uh, you said that there was uh, that there were many lessons which you, uh, which uh, managers took from uh, new me uh, managers. Uh, what was your lesson? The biggest lesson. lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you're talking to me or? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the lesson I learned is that, you know, there are so many lessons I learned. One thing is that, you know, we are not supposed to 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 judge something out of the appearance, out of the just one, one time meeting or something. You have to, if you want to know the people's mindset and background and everything, you have to spend some time, you have to be serious, you have to be patient to get to know the people you're talking to. And so don't make a quick conclusion and uh, it's not a good idea. So you, you have to spend some time, certain amount of time to get to know each other. And uh, 
so then if you take some time and get serious and and uh, then the, your partner will feel that you are serious then they are ser they become serious then you can discuss you know key things together so uh, it's patience and seriousness is is it's a you know worldwide it's it's very important worldwide and uh, that is one of the things i learned from those workers and uh, so what uh, you know the right after this session is over not session right after i was in charge of the training program in japan um next to 86 you know 86 two years i will work on this project uh, two years in japan then i was sent to san francisco uh, office so i have a chance almost every every day i just go i went to the new me uh, new me uh, plant and walk around over there and uh, so then i ran into all those people who came over to japan and so we already established during the three weeks stay establishing some relation and so i can see huge changes taking place on each of them and so uh, you know what once you are serious of learning something and you put into practice not only learning on your mindset but you put you put into practice what you have learned and make it a rule or make it a habit then it will stay there so uh, learning something is not enough learning something then you put into practice you change it in your own style and you create your own way of doing things and practice it and make it a rule to do every single day, then it's become your habit. So uh, those type of, you know, seriousness and continuous, you know, working and uh, uh, repeating over and over again until it becomes your habit. So that type of, you know, practice is so important. So that I call it patience. So. Uh, that is one of the things I learned, and that is not only for Japanese or only for Toyota people. It's worldwide. To it apply can apply to everybody. And the new me people are one good evidence that if as long as it's universal, the idea is very, you know, universal. Then it works to anybody in the in the world. And what were the lessons taken uh, by John Shook? What he learned when we were discussing um, well, all this the, training. The, the, uh, John Shook. Oh. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. John Shook, you know. Uh, because he is very. If he was a. He is American, oh, yeah. yeah. So he had different oh, yeah, point well, of actually, view. Mm -hmm. I was actually. It was not necessarily my decision to hire people. Mm -hmm. I was. I would like. I was wanting to have some American uh, staff member working, but it, it. You know, we are so busy then. One of the top management asked me, Yoshino, just, you know, you're dealing with American workers. And so then you have to understand what they think in their mindset, but better we, don't you think it's better for us to hire American staff members working for you? So they asked me. So I said, yes, sir, of course, that's great. That's great. But I didn't even think about asking about it. But so they started and I agree. And so uh, it was great, and uh, it took so I don't remember how many people, maybe nine or ten people candidate, and I was one of the interviewers almost at the, at the final stage, and uh, I ran into John Shuk, and I was so impressed with his flexibility. John Shuk is not, uh, you know, John Shuk is 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 not a typical American, but he is a he's he's a good listener. And he does not brag about his his career, or whatever. So he he listens to us, and and uh, then you know he is very flexible and very you know uh, also outgoing, but also he's a good listener, and he's always ready to learn anything. So uh, I was so impressed. Anyway, so whenever I run into some issues, I cannot solve the problem. I just ask John, John, what do you think? You know, this is my idea. What do you think? Then he has, he brings us another idea. So there are so many things that we can learn from John Shuk as well. And John Shuk, of, I believe John Shuk has learned so many things from us too. So it was great, you know, great uh, experience for us and also for us Toyota people as well. 
So John Shukri becomes a superstar <laughs> with the Toyota. And he is sharing his uh, knowledge gathered during this project oh, yeah. uh, all over the world. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, taking from your experience, uh, if uh, what would be your golden rules uh, for those who are starting uh, with, uh, with Toyota production system? Well, it, you know what, Toyota production is not too sophisticated, very simple. So uh, many people, when we discuss the production system or, you know, uh, management system, everybody believes, oh, that's a good idea. So, but understanding whether it's a good idea or not is very important. The more important thing is that if you like it, some portion or everything, whatever, then you, it's so important to put it into practice in your own style. No need to copy it the way it is in, is, is Japanese, but you create your own style and make small changes if necessary, but you put it into practice and you fuel it by yourself, whether it really fits you. Then it becomes your, your, your style. So if you don't do that, then you... You hear something, you you remember in your mindset, but you, your hands and body does not uh, does not uh, you know, memorize it. So uh, put into practice. If you learn something new and you like it so much, then you put into practice. Then it make your own style, create your own style. Then it's it's yours, not Toyota's anymore. It's your your style. So uh, action. Put it into practice is so important. Okay, thank you. There is a question from Jacek Biesek. Uh, would you like to, to ask uh, directly, Jacek? Uh, yeah, sure. um, uh, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's difficult to hear you. Maybe now it's, is it? Oh, yes, yes, it's better. Mm -hmm. So my question is uh, how to maintain a fluid flow of knowledge within the group of co-workers. I, I, I couldn't hear you clearly, but uh, can you repeat it again, please? Uh, yes, uh, the question is how to yeah. maintain a fluid flow of knowledge within the group of co-workers. How to... How to uh, what? Do, do I understand correctly, Jacek, that uh, you want to ask how to um, how to share the knowledge uh, between co-workers? Exactly. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good question because you know, in in maybe in, in Western style management style, boss decide most of the things and tell the people you do this, but. The people working for you have their own style, own way of thinking, own values, own, you know, different with each other. So uh, you have to ask them, okay, this is my idea, but what do you think? You have to ask them, then you have to create the space where you can discuss with each other. And many Western people just, you know, if they are so much experienced, then they believe they know everything. No need to ask somebody. So, okay, this is the idea, you do this. Then it's only one way. But you always you know, share it with somebody and then you have to wait and until they come up with their own idea. And even though their idea is not so good, still it's important for them to speak up. That is one way to make them feel to come up with an idea. And through those practices over and over again, then the people working for you will become more experienced, you will learn how to express themselves. So that's, we call it developing people, help them to develop. That is, that is one of the things that uh, Toyota believes is so important as managers. And uh, actually that is what I'm doing, even though I retired from Toyota, I became a university, professor and I just I always try to do what I have learned 
and in, within Toyota and, and put it into practice with my students. And so that is that really works fine because my students keep wondering why Mr. Yoshino is so serious about coaching us. He does not need any other teacher has done us to us. Only he he did it. he does it. Why is that? So that is our style, Toyota people style. If we believe that something is good and then I, you want somebody is that is to learn some key things out of that, then you share it with them and then they help them out. So uh, always, you know, try to share it with other people so that, uh, you know, you, 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 you can see your, your nice you know, way of thinking will prevail uh, around you. So that is uh, that is one of the things I I, I believe I, one of the things I learned uh, from working at Toyota. And uh, so there's uh, one more question. Uh, would you like to give yourself some advice before going to the U.S. for the first time? What would you like to avoid teaching uh, people Toyota production system? I see. Oh, okay, that's a good question. You know, Toyota production system is not too difficult, very simple. However, it's new concept to many of the Westerners, particularly. So we believe this is a great idea. However, you know, you never know. Other people might have a different idea. So don't try to force something to them until they feel they are ready to accept something. So we ha we have to be patient until they are ready to learn something, you know. And uh, many people just try to force something. Okay, this is a great idea. So you have to learn this. Okay, maybe first trial, maybe they will learn, but they are not ready. So you have to be patient to, and you have to create some ambience, and between you and your people who you like, and uh, then make them ready to learn something. And uh, so uh, that that's why I keep saying that you have to be patient and uh, you have to be serious. And uh, and then if if you do that, show the patience and show the seriousness, they will feel, oh, okay, this guy is so serious. Why he's so serious? He, he, he tried to help us. Why he's trying to help us? Then they feel so happy. So. Uh, Patience and seriousness is 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 my 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 important uh, motto. <laughs> Thank you for these uh, great uh, words uh, because I think that this uh, make it by your own uh, try and check uh, what will work in your culture and the seriousness and the patience is really good advice. For, for our uh, way of using Toyota production system in Poland. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you a lot uh, for today's uh, meeting. And My uh, I hope uh, that we will have the opportunity to meet you uh, sure, in, sure. in Poland or <laughs> directly or, uh, yeah. or online uh, during next semester. Sure, sure. Any anytime you have some questions, then we, we should do this. <laughs> I'm enjoying. I'm, all the questions you guys ask, it's very, very important. It's very important because I can learn so many things. You learn something, but I can learn maybe more things than you do. I Thank really you. appreciate this chance. Thank you for today, so, and uh, thank you all of you for participating and being with us. Have a nice afternoon and okay. good evening to you. Okay. So. <laughs> thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.